Welcome back to Father and Son Investing. In this video, we're going to cover how to open a Schwab One custodial account. I'll talk about what the benefits are for using Schwab for a custodial account. We'll talk about the application process. We'll talk about how to fund the account. We'll talk about what you should expect after the account has been funded. And lastly, we will talk about what do you do once your minor is no longer a minor and the account will become all theirs. Now, if you haven't already watched the What is a Custodial Account video, I would encourage you to watch that before you watch this and then come back and pick up. All right, Charles Schwab Custodial Account is the one that I am most familiar with because it's the one that I used for my teenager when we established his custodial account. What are the benefits to using Charles Schwab for a custodial account? Well, one of them is that there's no account opening fee or maintenance fees. There is no minimum deposit, so you can open this account with no money yet to put in it if you like. There are also no fees for most trades that a teenager or child would be making. There are some fees involved if you get into such things as over-the-counter markets or uh, making trades on a foreign exchange. If your young person wants to get into futures or options, you're looking at some fees for that as well. One other really nice thing that you can get from Schwab is the ability to buy what they call Schwab stock slices. Now say your young person wants to buy a share of Tesla. Uh, unless they have you know eight, nine hundred dollars, they're not gonna be able to do that, or they want to buy a share of Apple or Amazon. Again, a lot of money to be able to buy those. So if they want a slice of Apple, I know, bad pun, they can purchase it for as little as $5. Additionally, they can purchase multiple slices of lots of different companies. So there's an example here where for $50, this person got slices of a total of $9,373 worth of the 10 stocks there. In addition to that, your young person can have proof that they're an owner. They have the ability here to print out a slice stock tangible certificate that they can show their friends or put on the wall or anything else they want to do with it. Let's move on to the next step. We'll talk about how to do the application. If you already have a Schwab account, Schwab will ask you to log in. If you don't already have a Schwab account, then you'll have to create that first before you can move on to the next step. Once you have either logged into your Schwab account or you have created an account and logged into it, you then will be able to complete this application in one of two ways. If you're lucky, you're going to get the digital version of this where you will enter all of the information in each of these tabs above here, custodial info, minor info, account info, etc. Now, if you're not lucky, you're gonna end up doing the same type of information, but you're gonna be doing it all by hand. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and use the printed version of this, but just know that similar information could be entered online. Now, before you actually get to doing the application, make sure that you have these things available. Your, your social security number, your driver's license, your employer's name and address, contact information, date of birth, and social security number of the minor. And if you want to use any uh, bank information, statement information for electronically transferring funds, you'll want to have that information as well. For the sake of brevity on this video, I won't go into a lot of this in detail. A lot of it is very self-explanatory. You'll put in the minor's information. That is the minor who will become the account holder. After you've entered all that information, it's gonna ask you for two questions. Essentially, it's wanting to know if the minor is an insider, uh, such as are, are they employed by a stock exchange or are they affiliated with one, et cetera, and are, are they a 10% shareholder or a policymaker uh, within a publicly held company? You'll answer yes or no to those questions. You'll put in the minor's annual income and net worth. You'll then do the same type of thing for the custodian's information. And you'll even answer those same two insider questions. Lastly, it will ask you what the investment experience is of the custodian. And then it will ask you at what age would you like the termination of this custodial account to occur. That would be when the minor is either 18 or up to 21 in some states. There's just a little bit more information it's gonna want from you. Uh, it, you can designate a trusted contact. That is just somebody that Charles Schwab can call if they have concerns about potential financial exploitation or they need to communicate some issues regarding the account and they can't reach the custodian. 
There are some other questions on there that are just self-explanatory about the purpose of the account and what type of funds will be going into this account. It will give you the option to do something called Schwab One Checks. Essentially, this will allow the miner to be able to write checks from this investment account similar to the way that a regular banking account works. You're getting near the end of the process now. It's going to ask you how you would like to fund the account. You have some options there. Enclose a check or a money order. I think personally that's the easiest way. You don't even necessarily have to enclose it. Once the account has been established, you can write a check. Your child can use the Charles Schwab app, take a picture of the check, and electronically deposit the check. Now there are other options. If you want, you can connect the miner's savings account or checking account to Charles Schwab. If you choose that option, they're gonna do two tiny little deposits into the miner's account. I'm talking about things like 13 cents and 36 cents. And then once those deposits have been made, you simply log back in and enter the amount of the deposits. And Charles Schwab knows that it's a legitimate account and that the transfer function is working. You have the option of entering a successor custodian. If something were to happen to the custodian of the account and they could no longer function as the custodian, you can automatically designate a successor who can then take over as the custodian of the account. You don't have to do that. Finally, after reading through the agreement, etc., you're going to get to sign to authorize to open the account. That's it. That's the application. Now, there's one other feature in here that I want to make sure you're aware of. You'll see on the application something that says offer slash referral code. I'm going to offer you my referral code. I will put that in the information down below. It's just a code that you can put there. Depending on how much money you're going to fund this account with, Charles Schwab may give you some extra. So if you put in $1,000, Charles Schwab will kick in another 100 so your teen or child will already be $100 up on their account. Again, I don't get anything for putting that referral code there, but I think it's a nice feature. And hey, if someone else can get some money, fantastic. Let's move on to the next thing. Once you have this account, one of the great features, I think, another reason for using Charles Schwab is their research ability on their website. Your child, your minor will learn so much from using this research department. Now, I actually think this is a great thing. For myself, I use Vanguard. Uh, because Vanguard has just incredibly low fees on things. But one thing I really don't like about Vanguard is their research tools on their website are terrible. Finally, let's just talk about what happens when the minor reaches that age 18 or to 21 where we're going to transfer the account to them. What has to happen or what will happen? Shortly before the minor's birthday, you're going to get something in your email or in the mail indicating that the minor's birthday is coming up and they will give you information about what needs to be done. The minor is going to have three options. If they'd like to keep the Schwab account, there is some paperwork that has to be filled out. You simply download it, fill it out, and mail it back. Do not send it back before the minor's birthday. They won't accept it before the birthday. If they want to transfer that account to a different financial institution, you'll click on the link there. And if they want to close the account and request a check for the funds, that can be done. But hopefully they will have learned enough about investing to want to continue this journey. For the custodian of the account, there's also a little transfer worksheet there so that you can help in the process of transferring this account from the custodian to the minor in their own name. One other important thing to remember, remember that the login information, while it's a custodial account, is going to be your username and password. You have the choice of whether you'd like to control that and only let yourself log in for the minor. In my case, I just gave that username and password to my son, who was then able to choose his own stocks to buy and sell and do his own research. I, of course, still had access to the account so I could see what was happening. That's it for opening the Charles Schwab custodial account. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave those down below. Again, don't forget to look down below for the referral code that you can use for an extra $100 should you choose to put 1000 into this account. If this information was helpful, please give us a thumbs up and share this information with other people you know who have minors that might be interested in a custodial account. And until next time, Enjoy your custodial investing.